Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being so many. Uh, I take it as a sign of the growing interest for continuous uh, manufacturing. Um, I believe that uh, continuous manufacturing is one of the most um, significant chapters in the history of pharmaceutical manufacturing. And we've seen today uh, all the advantages uh, that uh, switching to, from batch production to continuous manufacturing can bring. Um, why we haven't switched to continuous manufacturing yet? We have seen today that there are some different reasons, not only technical reasons, uh, cost reasons. Uh, I uh, personally believe that um, there's also a matter of uh, uh, involvement of all the stakeholders. Uh, there are plenty of stakeholders involved in a continuous manufacturing project. I uh, see um, R&D people, uh, production teams, quality assurance, equipment vendors, IT specialists, uh, regulators, and last but not least, academics, uh, are all involved at the same time, all on the same way uh, to continuous manufacturing together since the beginning. Uh, usually, uh, in the past, uh, in the old concept of pharmaceutical manufacturing, in the old concept of pharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, all the stakeholders were involved step after step. So it's uh, definitely more difficult to work all together at the same time. And this kind of involvement, I believe it's also in the spirit uh, of this event. Uh, that's why we uh, plan this event with dif people with different uh, background. So I thank, uh, I have a special thanks for, for the speakers uh, who accepted to come here and share their current experience, uh, knowledge and lesson learned. I guess it's, um, it's a good uh, opportunity of growth for, for all of us. Um, I uh, start um, my presentation before talking to Chroma, which is the next, uh, the novel uh, continuous coder we have just developed, and you will have the chance to see it in operation tomorrow. I would like to uh, share with you uh, some ideas and the reasoning that the R&D my team has made in these last uh, 10 years. Um, based on what we have uh, listened today in the previous presentation, uh, we started from quality and cost as the drivers for the paradigm, paradigm shift pursued by pharmaceutical industry and, and regulators. Um, the focus is on the patient. Uh, we need to increase the, the quality to deliver to the patient safer, higher potency, and more effective drugs. It means that quality must be built into the product. So the, together with equipment uh, development, there's an involvement in uh, um, deeper process understanding. Uh, continuous manufacturing fits perfectly in this scenario because um, it matches quality by design, um, by definition. Uh, a continuous manufacturing process is a process where changes of parameters are allowed while the process is, is running. So at IMA, we wondered uh, what we could do to uh, support our customer for, to go for continuous manufacturing. Um, in this picture, you see uh, how combining equipment design, that is our basic uh, expertise, with process engineer, we can achieve different kind of levels of, uh, of equipment starting from modular of the shelf, very standard equipment, uh, suitable for all the products, and being vendors, in that case, we don't even need to know 
uh, what are the products that are, is going to be processed in this equipment. So involving more process engineers, we can achieve a very high level of customization uh, of, of, of the equipment. And I guess the, um, the, extreme, uh, the extreme edge is uh, dedicated equipment to one product. This picture, this diagram is valid also for batch machine, but I guess uh, it becomes more significant in case of continuous manufacturing uh, equipment. So starting from this base, uh, we, and thinking continuous, uh, we uh, decided to boost our process uh, engineering part. And uh, being a vendor, it's also important to know to, for us to understand what could be the business cases. And I thank Lawrence for his presentation because he explained um, some uh, of the milestones uh, that uh, are driven uh, Johnson to continuous manufacturing. Um, we uh, we figured out some business case. By definition, uh, continuous manufacturing in the common uh, thinking, it's uh, a process for huge uh, quantity of product. Uh, for a system working 24 hours, uh, seven days uh, a week on an annual basis with a minimum shutdown. Is this what pharmaceutical industry exactly want? Uh, maybe not. Based on our experience uh, in these last five years, we collected information and we see uh, exactly what Lawrence uh, um, presented before. There are two levels of uh, uh, production. Um, uh, higher throughput, around 100 to 100 kilos per hour, and uh, maybe dedicated to generics drugs, uh, and, a uh, and a lower uh, product throughput, uh, between 10 and 50 kilos uh, per hour. Maybe dedicated to new generation of drug, low dosage, um, and uh, high value with uh, other issues involved, uh, still looking at from our perspective of machinery vendors, uh, because this small uh, product flow required attention for containment, uh, if the products are potent, and also for cleaning in place still to maintain uh, the operator far away from the product. So in our brainstorming at EMA, we investigated um, these four areas as where we should um, study and improve to be prepared for continuous manufacturing equipment. Of course, equipment design, uh, but most important, um, process engineering, advanced process control, and process analytical technology. In these last 10 years, we invested in these four um, areas of competence. Uh, we invested 6% of our yearly turnover um, in R&D, and we dedicated, uh, we are still dedicating 10% of our personnel to R&D projects. We actually uh, make a change, we, uh, we actually uh, are going to a change also in, in the people involved, in the background of the people involved in our R&D. Um, we are not anymore um, mechanical designer and software designer, but we int have introduced uh, other professionals in our team. Uh, we have now chemical engineers, pharmacists, uh, physics, and specialists in chemometrics. Um, so, this change uh, we use also to develop the new machine, also batch mode, still to uh, comply with a quality by design approach. In terms of uh, speaking uh, specifically about continuous manufacturing, 
uh, at a certain point, we decided uh, to share our energies onto uh, on two types of innovation. Um, a more disruptive uh, approach, considering uh, the end-to-end -end integrated process, and we decided to participate uh, to Continuous Pharmaceutical, uh, which is the company, uh, the spin-out company uh, from MIT, and we will have a presentation later by Salvatore Marsha. Um, betting on this uh, innovative process called end-to-end, -end, where the final form is achieved by addressing the API synthesis uh, since the very beginning to simplify the process uh, and have a, a consistent uh, dosage forms at the end. On the other hand, uh, here our team in Bologna uh, um, put the energies in development of uh, continuous manufacturing systems more related to conventional technologies, using the fact that in our portfolio we have already some machines that uh, by, uh, for the working principle are continuous already. So this is the, um, the calendar of our way to continuous manufacturing. We actually started many years uh, ago. Uh, at that time, it's almost 10 years ago, at that time, the trends for continuous manufacturing were very much related to granulation process. Uh, it looked like that continuous in pharma was only about granulation. Uh, probably because granulation step in the batch uh, production chain, it's uh, the most complex, the most critical step, uh, the most expensive. And uh, going continuous, um, using all the advantages um, we see in the theory of continuous manufacturing, could uh, take to granulation um, an evident advantage. Um, we put this project in standby because in the meantime we were studying and developing the system. The trends of continuous manufacturing have switched to more sim simpler <coughs> process. Granulation um, was tried to be skipped uh, with side operation, like we heard before, uh, by um, premixing the API on, a, on, a, on one excipient, or um, with other, um, by using raw materials from uh, new generation of raw materials, more prepared for their physical properties to be handled in a continuous manufacturing system. In the meantime, we also uh, thought that the partnership with Continuous Ph Pharmaceutical in Boston could, could help us to um, develop a system uh, with no need of granulation. Um, so we started to think about the direct uh, uh, compression uh, continuous system, and we started from the very end part, from Chroma, the continuous quarter, that we launched in 2007 as a conceptual design. Now we have built the first unit, we have tested, and we put the Chroma in line with the Preximal tablet press. We have a testing unit, and you will, we, you will have the chance to see it operating uh, tomorrow afternoon during the site tour. Um, we are going to uh, set up a testing unit for continuous direct uh, compression within the end of next year, and we are also working with some customers to continuous direct uh, encapsulation. So here you have um, a re um, scheme representing uh, chroma, at the end is the continuous coater. 
connected to the um, tablet press and on upstream the tablet press there's a continuous feeding mixing uh, system. For the time being, we have developed uh, the, bottom, the bottom part. What we are going to do within next year is to complete the line with the upstream uh, part. Um, same, almost same thing if we think the um, direct encapsulation line uh, with dosing and mixing system uh, on top, the um, capsule fillers, de duster and in some cases, instead of collecting the capsules inside the bin, uh, in case they need bending, we are capable to integrate a capsule bending machine. We have relied in our uh, brainstorming during these years that we could make the difference uh, also among our competitors uh, with the integrated control system. Um, we listened to some customer, uh, Johnson is one, one of them, and that uh, the key of the continuous uh, manufacturing system is, stands in the integrated control system. Uh, we, our technical department, attend the ISP, ISP community for continuous manufacturing together with Lawrence, with other vendors, with other uh, pharmaceutical company, and um, we we are working together um, with this community to. Uh, match the dream that Lawrence uh, presented before, even if I, um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm honest, uh, it's uh, really a, a, dif a difficult task. Uh, more for mechanics to integrate maybe different sizes of uh, every type of equipment rather than, than control system. Um, so the vision uh, of the integrated control system is uh, uh, to have an architecture, uh, a control architecture that works like in an orchestra. Like in an orchestra, the single players are very skilled uh, in playing their instrument, but um, the um, symphony is excellent only if the orchestra have a good uh, conductor. So this is a, a scenario for integration enterprise where the process machines are at the end and this is an overview of how a, completely, um, uh, a complete automation of uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing co could be. Um, so our system for integrated control is based on a single unit of operation, all independent, all with uh, uh, their own control system um, and uh, communication protocols to an upper level. This gives a, a great advantage, advantage not only to the final users, like Lawrence explained before, because they can um, uh, stop one machine and replace with, a, with another one. Uh, same for the PAT sensors in case they are not the right one or they have some issues. But it's also a, an advantage for us because this architecture um, allows us to be immediately ready because this is our um, daily competence uh, on, on even on batch machines. So this kind of architecture is what we uh, usually deliver uh, uh, every day. And also another advantage of this modularity in the system is for, for maintenance. So in case uh, some electronic components becomes obsolete or have some issues, they can be replaced easily. And this is the diagram for the multiple unit operation where 
um, all the machines uh, independent uh, are connected to upper level of supervision and management. So how we um, came to uh, develop our continuous uh, manufacturing system, um, we rely on our history. Um, we are 60 years old in manufacturing machines for solid forms. We started uh, 60 years ago with capsule filling machine. We have now the complete portfolio uh, for all uh, the process step to produce solid forms, all kinds of solid forms. So we have granulation equipment, uh, we have capsule filling, tableting, coating, uh, weight checking for capsules and tablets, handling system, and uh, also washing uh, machines and washing uh, skid. Our experience in uh, Processing solid forms um, is for a vast range of, uh, um, of solid forms, from pellets to tablets to granules, uh, mini tablets, uh, mupes that can go either in tablets or capsule filler in, of capsules. The process expertise at IMA Active is supported by IMA Lab. Um, we have a lab uh, with 40 years experience, especially in granulation and coding, uh, that support, have always supported our customers, not only to select the equipment, but also uh, in a in the after sales uh, phase. Uh, we do trials for formulation studies, trials for process optimization. Uh, we support technology transfer uh, at customer side. We uh, also provide help for, help for cleaning strategy. And the lab is always updated because it uh, keeps relationship with um, uh, suppliers of raw materials, of detergents, uh, of PAT and instruments. Recently, we have set up a lot of collaboration um, with uh, PAT vendors. And last but not least, uh, the lab also keeps relationship with university. We have students um, going through our lab for, for, st uh, for stage uh, and training period. But um, what we have boosted in, uh, in these last 10 years is the, um, uh, the job of the lab is supporting a lot also our technical department, introducing not only pharmacists but other kind of uh, professionals. Um, the lab has a, a main role in developing uh, of the new technologies. Um, so they support the equipment design, um, they try the prototypes to explore what are the ranges of efficiency of the machine. Um, and it's also uh, a big contribution they gave to de the development of Chroma Continuous Coater. So now we go uh, through a Chroma presentation. Um, maybe uh, somebody had other opportunities to, to see this presentation. Uh, today we have uh, added some process uh, data. Uh, we spent all this year in testing uh, the Chroma. Uh, and we have now set up a lab available for, for trials. So in case you uh, have the product to test or uh, at, uh, at least um, uh, the willing to explore this continuous uh, manufacturing process, uh, you are the welcome. 
chroma design uh, is based on a traditional coating process. Um, it's thought to be in line with the tablet press. Uh, specifically, it was uh, designed for, a, for the most popular um, model of tablet press, the, mo the most uh, sold, 300,000 uh, tablets uh, per hour. Um, and this is a, an intermediate size. Um, Chroma has uh, the novelty to be truly continuous. Uh, it's uh, a coating pan where the tablets enter uncoated and uh, exit uh, with coating. Uh, there's no recirculation of the, of the tablets. The main feature of uh, Chroma are truly continuous, innovative, modular, and compact. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see all these uh, features. So uh, the most important feature is that the tablets uh, have only one chance to be coated going under the spraying guns. Uh, so the the process of chroma relies a lot on the constant tablet flow from the exit to uh, from the uh, inlet to the outlet. So you see also from the video that uh, Chroma is modular. We are watching inside a module now, and this is what you are going to see tomorrow. So the, um, the tablets enter from the top, and thanks to the rotation of the um, perforated pan, uh, goes underneath the spraying gun and towards the exit. And I become... Uh, coated as more as they go through, through the cylinder. We think it's modular uh, to try to be more flexible, <laughs> as uh, uh, the, our customers are asking for, uh, to avoid scale-up issues, uh, to uh, try to uh, comply with different phases of batch coating. While preheating and dedusting, product cooling are standard operation that it's quite easy once you load a batch coating pan. Um, so we had to think about also these phases uh, having a continuous flow of tablets. Uh, so it's designed to be up modular up to four modules, and the module can be combined depending on the process and on the coating target. So in the previous, uh, you can see that one module can be used instead of a deduster at the exit of a tablet press, can be used to dedust the tablets and warm them up before start spraying the coating suspension then we can have two models of coatings and we can discharge the tablet uh, once cooled by using one module um, for, for cooling with, with uh, uh, cool air. Or it just, if the tablets come already ready, dusted and enough warm, we can start uh, spraying immediately. Um, so it's a very versatile uh, design. Uh, we patented the transfer system between one module and the other. It's, uh, it seems uh, simple, but actually this part of the machine uh, is the core because it ensures to have the same tablet flow given at the beginning by the dosator. So just to give you, start to give you some numbers about Chroma, uh, one module, uh, which is uh, more or less one meter length, 
can load up to uh, nine kilos of uh, tablets. It depends on the type of tablets. But the goal is to maintain this uh, tablet flow constant, but also uh, regular and not too high uh, to receive, because the tablets need to receive the, the, the suspension, the spraying, uh, just once by each of the gun in the cylinder. Uh, and it's designed to achieve a weight gain of 2-4%. That uh, is more or less what's usually applied for aesthetic coating. Uh, and with a throughput uh, estimated between 36 and 90 kilos uh, per hour. So combining more modules uh, in parallel, uh, we can uh, achieve a higher throughput. Uh, so if modules are two, we double the throughput, uh, still for the same coating purposes, two, four percent weight gain. Instead, we can uh, combine the modules in series uh, with a throughput uh, that remains the same. Uh, but we can, with a longer path of the tablets, go underneath more spraying gun and achieve a, a higher weight gain. So with two models, we estimate to double the weight gain up to 8%. Um, of course, uh, this can be projected for four models, and you, we have in parallel up to three, 360 kilos per hour uh, throughput. In, while in series, uh, we have still the same throughput on one model, 36, 90 kilos per hour, uh, up to a 16% of weight gain. Chroma is designed to be compact. Uh, we watched a lot to ergonomics. It's uh, easy to disassemble and have um, the parts to take out are um, uh, not, not heavy. Uh, I've, an operator can, can manage them quite easily. And it's designed for through the wall installation, so all like the batch machine, all the uh, utilities, the hair handling unit uh, should be installed in a technical area behind it, behind the chroma. We innovate uh, the control system according to the architecture uh, I mentioned before. We have also a new um, uh, graphical interface, new icons uh, matching the EMA corporate user interface that uh, will be applied to all the EMA machine. So, and this is also an advantage because Preximo will have the same um, the same type of uh, interface, so also for the operator, uh, we believe it's a benefit um, to have also the, vi the same uh, visualization of the, of the um, uh, control. But it's innovative also for the process uh, control. Um, so, as I said before, the core of uh, this chroma technology stands in the tablet, uh, the tablet flow. The tablet flow is controlled by the dosator um, and by the transfer system in case we are, we are using more than one module and we need to transfer the tablet from the first one to the second one. Um, in the controls, we put also an optical camera. Um, I, I guess this instrument is something that we uh, definitely needed to use uh, in developing the equipment. Um, I wish we uh, should sell the, um, uh, the machine uh, with the camera as, a, as an optional. So uh, for the time being, our process rely on the, on the load cells. The camera is just for double checking if something's going wrong. Um, the spraying 
the spray rate is also important, but in case of the chroma, it's a consequence of the, um, uh, of the tablet's flow. And we control it uh, for the time being uh, with the same instrument used for a batch uh, coating pan. Uh, with a flow meter, with a pressure transducer uh, to uh, check uh, if one of the, if the spraying guns are working all together. And uh, we have under development uh, a new sensor um, to control more precisely the, um, uh, the liquid flow. Then, of course, uh, like in a standard batch coating pan, uh, we monitor the, um, we control the uh, tablet temperature, not with PT100 uh, probe, but with um, pyrometers because they don't touch the, the sensor, don't touch the uh, the tablets, uh, and they don't they don't disturb the the tablet flow. And then we think also to use uh, an NIR device uh, to check um, uh, distribution between the tablets. Now we have some results of the um, uh, Chroma performances. Um, that uh, actually tells you um, a little bit of uh, how we developed the machine. Um, these uh, experiments uh, come from the needs to understand if the chroma was suitable for all the tablets. In our milestones for this project, we put that chroma was for film coating of tablets uh, in the range of 525 millimeters diameter with weights uh, from 50 to 2,000 milligrams. Uh, but we, need to, we needed to test our prototype to see if uh, this milestone was, <laughs> was true. So you see here some example. We spent some time in just uh, adjusting the tablet flow with different types of tablets uh, of different weights before start spraying. And we are now confident uh, that the cylinder, the perforated pan with the baffles like they are designed, are suitable for, for the majority of the tablets. We have here some example. We tested round uh, tablets from six 6, 9, 13 millimeters, uh, and two types of oblong tablets. Um, they all stand in a mean residence time suitable to achieve uh, later the 4% uh, weight gain. And, and the tablet flow is uh, very um, consistent. The second step of our test was um, testing uh, the coating. So we started spraying. And here you, you have an example of the same uh, kind of tablets, oblong tablets of 600 milligrams coated with OPA-DRY PVA2, uh, concentrated 20%. Uh, and the process was to achieve a weight gain of 3%. Uh, we experiment a different um, tablet's flow rate, uh, 48 kilos per hour, 60, 78, and 90 kilos per hour. Uh, of course, the mean residence time changed. Uh, consequently, we've changed the, the spray rate. Uh, and in all this uh, tablet's flow rate, we achieve an acceptable, more than acceptable uh, mean delta E. Mean delta E is a um, uh, measurement of color uniformity uh, we decide to take um, to have a method to establish if the coating was good or not. And we, we have taken this uh, method by 
what ColorCon also used to test their product. And uh, it's measured by, by a portable color spectrophotometer. Uh, and then uh, the data is elaborated until to detect the standard deviation of the color uniformity. And this method uh, is, uh, is to accept the tablet uh, uh, if the tablets are with delta E below 3. Then uh, we made some tests, or better, some comparison uh, with batch perforated pan, uh, because we imagine that uh, our customer would like to make an evaluation. Uh, am I going continuous, or I still remain with the batch <laughs> coating pan? Um, so we did this uh, exercise uh, by comparing um, the process with chroma in one module and a perforated pan of, uh, with a load of 150 kilo. So to compare, of course, we had to do some calculation. Uh, chroma load is, in this case, 7.6%. It, it's re it refers to the process of the same tablet as before, so it's uh, um, oblong tablet, 3% uh, uh, weight gain with uh, OpenDRI PVA2. Um, so the process was run uh, trying to maintain more or less the same parameters, starting from the, um, uh, from the fixed point of the uh, film coating, the, the tablet temperature. So in both the machines, the temperature of the core is between 42 and 44 degrees. And we adjusted all the other parameters to maintain uh, this um, status. So the parameters, the numbers you see here, are referring uh, to the steady state conditions that in chroma are reached in a few seconds. In a batch pan are actually uh, taken as the spray time. So we consider the steady state, uh, the time you spray in a batch coating pan. So we see that the mean residence time in chroma is measured and it was six minutes. In the perforated pan, uh, it was estimated as 132 minutes because 60 minutes was the spraying time to achieve uh, the weight gain, the 3% weight gain, while all the other time is what we call the, hand the handling time. So the loading time, the time we roll the tablets, the uncoated tablets in the, in the pan to dedust them and to warm them up before it starts spraying, the drying phase, the cooling phase, and the discharge time. So it's evident um, that uh, going continuous, uh, like we have seen also in the other presentation, simplify a lot the side operation of the process. In both cases, the uh, results of uh, coating are at the same level. Uh, we measured the delta E, it's uh, still uh, uh, below one. And also we uh, calculated, and we tried to estimate the um, uh, energy consumption in, a, in the exchange of heat between the air and the, and the tablets. And we see that um, there's, uh, in kilojoule per hour, chroma uh, as much a more efficient process. And this is due to design, to the fact that the tablets are, have a much higher exposure to the, uh, to the guns. And then we did the last exercise uh, to see if chroma um, complies with the um, requirements for continuous manufacturing. Continuous manufacturing is stated no scale up at all, uh, because scale up is only a matter of time. Yes, this is, uh, this is true. Uh, unless you don't need to go 
under the minimum load of the of the of the chroma. So we compared three different scale, uh, scales of uh, perforated pan batch size and um, still to keep the temperature at the same level, uh, we see that the residence time uh, is uh, increasing with the size and we can replicate with chroma by uh, using more modules uh, in parallel, we can, of course, achieve uh, the same tablet flow requested for, uh, for, for the, the batch, the, I mean, the batch size of the perforated pan. So I think I'm uh, a lot over time, but I thought today is uh, a kind of chroma birthday. So, <laughs> so uh, um, I, can, I can go ahead with uh, uh, quickly through uh, the cleaning concept. Is actually this, um, I put these slides to anticipate some of the questions because I was sure that some of you um, would have asked about uh, how do you clean the chroma. Um, and this concept is actually uh, applicable to other uh, manufa continuous manufacturing equipment. It's, uh, uh, it's something also that we need to understand and we need to have your feedback about this because uh, cleaning uh, can go from manual cleaning to um, cleaning auto fully automatic cleaning in place. Um, going through an intermediate uh, wetting in place, that means uh, we wet the equipment and then uh, we disassemble so the operator has no risk to breathe the powders. For the time being, we, estimate, uh, we think about two types of uh, cleaning. A minor cleaning to manage um, uh, to keep the process efficient during the running time, uh, not in a major cleaning once uh, the chroma is uh, required to change the product. So for minor, minor cleaning, um, since we see the chroma installed in the same room of the Preksima, uh, we believe that um, once they are in line, uh, Preksima can run approximately, and this is an estimation, 30 hours before vacuum cleaning, uh, while chroma can uh, have a quick uh, cleaning uh, after 16 hours operation. So in this case, um, chroma is the, is the bottle neck of this uh, minor cleaning. While for the major cleaning, um, estimated after 200 hours of uh, production, uh, we see that uh, chroma cleaning is uh, uh, quite faster than a tablet press. So of course, we Im imagined uh, the most popular of the situation where the tablet press has no cleaning in place uh, uh, system. So for our approach to cleaning the chroma for the time being is uh, easy to disassemble so that it can be washed in a uh, machine for washing the parts. Uh, or in, a, in the next development, depending on requests, we could go for um, a washing in place uh, system that it's quite uh, easy for us since we have on all the equipment we produce. Conclusions. Um, I like this slide because I think for continuous manufacturing, uh, we need to work on this because I believe that neither vendors or uh, pharmaceutical companies would like to go for very much tailor-made equipment. So the only uh, chance we have uh, to 
stay with simple solution is to talk since the beginning. And so involve us uh, as soon as you have in mind to go continuous, we will be happy to participate to the engineering phase. Thank you, sorry for being so long, but uh, we had a lot of things to, to say. I think even uh, we are running a little bit over time, but I would like to use this opportunity maybe for one question. One question. Okay. Question is yours. We have time for questions also tomorrow too. Because Correct. It depends, uh, at, at the factory, yes. right. So we'll have to, uh, time at the, and during the dinner or whatever. People will bother you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Presentation. Oh, it's on. Uh, so thank you again. Um, I, have, I have one question. There is also a reason why we use batches, uh, uh, which is about mit uh, mitigating risk. So I'm wondering in the, say, quality of design uh, element, how does this design cope with potential quality issues and therefore the need to bracket, say, the issue that is at hand? Because if you continue... To, to manufacture this batch, then your batch size will also be quite large. And if there is an issue, that could potentially mean that you have to put a batch on hold, which has a, a large impact on, say, a yes, market but delivery. In case the batch has some defeat, you have to waste the whole batch. In this case, relying on a continuous tablet flow, we can uh, set um, this uh, separate discharge at the end for, for what is not compliant so and this is the advantage is not only for chroma it's for all the continuous equipment we already do uh, in tablet press and capsule fillers if there are some defeats the capsules or the tablets are uh, put uh, aside yeah well quickly um, it could also mean that there's a quality issue with for instance the material that you use for coating so not necessarily visible in the process so then it's not being ejected but it's it's kind of discovered uh, in the micro lab or the the chemical lab so th that was more my question how do you how do you kind of bracket uh, the issue that is at hand where now it's a one batch and in the in the future it could be a large batch yes we are, we are thinking to prepare even the coating suspension in continuous yeah. <laughs> Uh, for the time being, we didn't spend time in improving the, um, uh, the liquid suspension preparation. Of course, we pay much more attention to not have lamps to uh, have a, a smoother, a smoother um, liquid flow as much as possible. Um, I'm honest, we, we haven't tried so many coating types uh, for the time being. Uh, the most of the tests are made with PVA uh, based uh, OPA dry. We tested the new uh, concentrated coating by Coloricon, the Quicks. Um, still to understand if uh, going with a more concentrated solution could uh, speed up uh, and increase the um, production flow rate. But um, we have in our pipeline of tests to extend the trials to other type of coating too. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe I can answer that question also from, uh, from an engineer. How long is it going to take you? Okay, okay. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious to, uh, that people may be ready for coffee. So we'll have 10 minutes coffee break. We'll start here. Uh, please be, be in your seat in 10 minutes. We'll start at 4 o'clock. Thank you very much. <laughs>